leaders of the world. Welcome to Spread Love and Organizations, a podcast for purpose-driven healthcare leaders striving to make life better around the world by leading their teams with genuine care, servant leadership, and love. I'm Nashi, your host for this episode, joined by Théodore Léon Daridis, General Manager at Pierre Fabre in Spain. Théodore always wanted to be a vet, but then decided otherwise. Moving to basic science, then OSAP Business School in 2013, he joined Pierre Fabre as a trainee in corporate business development. He then successfully been leading teams since. He's now heading Pierre Fabre Medical Care in Spain as the general manager, uh, where he's leading a team of more than 250 people. Before that, he managed teams globally and locally in different geographies and culture. Uh, Théodore is uh, a great successful leader and I am so honored to have you with me today. Hi Naji, it's a privilege for me to participate into this podcast. Thanks for, for inviting me. I'd love to learn more, uh, Théodore, about your personal story from really wanting to be a, a vet, you know, uh, early on and now leading a country in a pharma company. Tell us a little bit more. <laughs> so, you know, being a vet was kind of the the beacon for me when uh, when I grew up because it, I knew where I wanted to go and uh, that made things uh, much easier. Uh, I knew a lot of my friends that didn't know what to do after high school. For me, it made just things uh, easier. Since I was eight years old, I wanted to be a vet, so I had to go to the scientific curricula. And then uh, in France, well, you have to uh, to go through uh, preparatory schools and then you, you eventually enter into the vet school, into a vet school. So everything was very clear for me and that helped me, uh, no choice until you, you have to, uh, to make one when you, you, know, you, uh, you undergo exams and you, you start selecting your schools. So I eventually chose some, something else, basic science. And I don't regret it, honestly, because basic science is uh, unlimited. And, uh, and I ended up in pharma, which was not planned either. But uh, I think it's it's just like how life uh, works. Some people uh, likes to you know uh, get on the boat and uh, and change directions when when life offers you opportunities. And I'm I'm part of these ones. I a lot of your uh, guests also share a bit of their uh, education, where they come from, and uh, how they sh- it shaped it shaped them uh, or their vision of the world. And maybe if I had to just point out something is. For me, the, I've never considered, uh, even though I was born and raised in France, I've never considered myself as a citizen of France, but more really as a global citizen and really from the, the childhood. Uh, and now I think it's no, no wonder that I like to uh, you know, uh, assume international position and, and uh, see, see other, other cultures, other ways of working. For me, it's very important. Love it, the, the global citizen. We will get back to it for sure. Uh, I want since you, you're sharing something, I think, super important. And many, many of us lived it. Many of our uh, listeners will, will be living it potentially. Uh, it's this move from basic science to business and then uh, becoming uh, an international leader as you are uh, today. What made you really make this decision? And any advice for, you know, for scientists, for young leaders, joining the healthcare industry on how you've done it and any thoughts uh, and advice on this? Sure. So um, there is a a very uh, selfish aspect to this choice, I think, and I I must raise it because uh, in Europe, uh, I think the the conditions of uh, a uh, researcher, basic researchers are not quite attractive as they they used to be in the past. And so I didn't want to... uh, you know, uh, uh, spend a life of uh, dedication uh, to and not get any retribution from it. So there is a pure selfish explanation to it. Uh, And I would say never go this route if you have only this uh, selfish uh, um, motivation. Uh, The other thing is uh, I really wanted to have, um, let's say, uh, some impact uh, further uh, than just a a specific uh, uh, research domain, a uh, research area that can be a bit restrictive, restrictive for me. I really wanted to have some impact and all, bottom line, when you, when you join uh, the industry, I, I think the, um, the, the richness of the project you're working on, uh, it changed uh, kind of uh, every year is different. That's something that's super exciting. And, um, and 
this is what I was looking for, a change uh, to constantly change. What you have in basic science is you have to ultra specialize yourself. And that was not uh, just not my passion. Uh, so I would say for, for everyone wondering if basic science is their path, wonder whether you, you like to be a, a super specialist of, of a specific topic, if you want to bring your, um, your contribution on a specific topic, or if you want to have maybe more a global view and industry is a great way to have a, a global perspective on things. Yeah, totally. This this global perspective, and as you said, right, like lying all the research to resources uh, that that you can have, and literally what what you've been doing now. How many patients you you wanted to talk about impact? Literally, this is what you do every day in in the exactly. Spain now, right? Like this is where you're exactly. uh, helping patients. Uh, I mean, you, you know, have... when I was a student, when I was a student, we were learning about uh, RNA therapeutics. Well, we were learning about RNA and how we could harness the RNA uh, uh, machinery in the cells. And now we see in the, that the industry, uh, together with the, of course, the, the work of research that, that is behind, the industry managed to, to create it as a reality of it, you know? Yeah. And I think this is what's exciting is to understand how it's going to be produced, how it's going to be, uh, um, you know, uh, registered, uh, uh, studied in a clinical trial, how it's going to be reimbursed, uh, managed uh, in, uh, on, a uh, on a distribution point of view. And that's what makes me, uh, you know, what drives me every day is to see all these complex aspects coming together. Basic okay. science being one of the, uh, being one of the, the bricks, you know. Yeah, yeah, it starts there, and there's this whole journey uh, of each one of the molecules and assets until it gets into patients' hands. Um, exactly. And you've led, you've led Theodore in uh, moments of crisis in countries. Obviously, you were leading uh, Spain in a, in a moment, you know, between the pandemic. You also were recent, I think, when all this started. Uh, any major challenges or stories and, and learning you, uh, you can share with us? Well, I, um, so I joined Pierre Fabre Spain. No, I would say in the phase where we were coming back to the pandemic. So we are speaking about waves and we were just in a wave. Uh, it's difficult to um, onboard in any organization without any, uh, you know, physical contact and like, sense of proximity with the, the people. So that was my difficulty, but I feel that this is the difficulty of a, a lot of uh, people uh, in the organization. So for me as a leader, when I join a new project, I need to understand what is the culture of the people working on this project. Um, what are their... Uh, how do they use to to work? Um, uh, what is the 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 links? What are the links between the people? And that makes it more difficult. Uh, the pandemic. Uh, so you have to understand whether people are acting. The team is acting like this because of the pandemic, because of the context, or is it because this is the culture of the the organization you're 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 joining? You know, and that makes it uh, quite uh, challenging. So you need to, I would say, uh, to develop other ways of developing your own proximity with the team, trying to enjoy any, any moment of uh, calm between the waves so that you can uh, onboard a bit better in the organization. But I've seen many talents entering during the pandemic and uh, exiting, uh, uh, going out of the position after a few months because they don't feel they fit in the organization. The question is whether they don't fit in the organization during the pandemic or Absolutely, you know, if they don't fit in the organization at all because of the culture of the, the company. So that's the challenge, I would say. Yeah, and, and this is such a, such a key moment. I'd love to ask for us to discuss more and learn from you if you've done some things you're, you've been successful with, because definitely onboarding in a virtual world, right? Like you're talking about the challenges of not being able to meet in person physically to, to kind of observe, right? Like we, we take out all those observations that spontaneously we would do just walking around the office or being in meetings with people, not on a screen, you know, all the chats before, after, and even how people interact, right? Like who's sitting next to whom and who's talking next to, who's talking to who before and after. So I, I totally relate to this and I'd love to hear uh, you know, if, if you you did some things that were successful, because I think we're still some sort of hybrid in, in different places, and this is most probably how it will continue for the near future. So any, any thoughts 
on this part. And then I would love to talk about hiring and people exiting. So as a next question, but let's start with this. Sure. So uh, one thing that uh, I took care of doing uh, when I joined uh, in, in this new role was to try to develop really the culture of feedback between the, myself and the team, try, trying to set up a, a atmosphere of confidence, of uh, trust between the team and uh, being, being able to tell each other things. Because what you usually see, as you said, and you can interpret and act and react differently, you don't see in this uh, in, in this situation of a virtual job. So you have to really uh, increase the level of communication with your team, be it formal or informal. And I felt it was very useful for me uh, as an example when I organized, uh, I think it was yeah, six months after my, my integration, I kind of organized a, uh, what we call an assimilation workshop, uh, work, ass manager assimilation workshop to, to basically try to gather all the feedback of my team and understand if the way we, we had been working over the past six, six months was the right path, try to understand if uh, there were some cultural shocks, things that I could not see uh, that I would have seen otherwise, right? Uh, you know, some reactions on the faces uh, in, in a way you, you manage your team. All of these things, I had to create an occasion to, to share it. And I would really advise any manager to develop the feedback, uh, collaborative feedback uh, for their team, not only for themselves, but really how the team works, how the teams uh, interact, how the team takes decision. Make sure that uh, you have you create these uh, these moments of uh, of communication. This is this is great. I think it's crucial, right? As you're saying, creating those moments, even in a virtual world, and it's um, it's great to hear how you successfully done it. You talked also about uh, onboarding. You know, talents during um, during those times and people leaving. Uh, there, there is a lot, you know, around. Are people living the culture? Are they feeling the culture of a company virtually? And even, uh, you know, it's interesting. You're mentioning exiting. I've been I've been reflecting a lot about um, not, not only uh, you know the cultural fit, uh, but also as uh, are we. Are we getting this, uh, you know, passion you can develop in a company just by meeting the others, having this energy coming from other colleagues uh, and, and moving forward? So have you managed to fix this? Are you now onboarding people a little bit, you know, differently, making sure they, uh, they get the sense of uh, who you are as an organization? It's a, it's a great question, uh, Naji. Um, so onboarding, I think, is the the, the, the most important phase in uh, in uh, manager experience uh, and in anyone experience in, a, in an organization, because this is where you create the foundation for for the future. What we have here in in my organization, what we we did not did not necessarily put this in place due to the COVID, but we are certainly more um, cautious that that it is implemented in, in practice. We have always an internal tutor and we make sure also that, um, you know, you have a welcome kit where you explain a bit the, the spirit of the organization. But then it's also making sure as a leader that whoever has been recently onboarded is, is included in some of the informal, um, informal uh, moments of the, the team uh, that are they included also in kind of the, the specific sub meetings that uh, can, can take place in uh, in some of the teams. So ensuring always that uh, when you have a 360 uh, degree vision on the organization to make sure that these people do not stay isolated in their function, but are taking taking care of also by the organization uh, itself. Usually, you know, when you had uh, an, uh, an office 20, uh, kind of a four, five days a week uh, rhythm at the office, you would end up uh, entering into a, a lunch or a dinner or a party, um, kind of a team party. So you have to make sure as a, as a leader that you get these people and you, you, you tell them about a team meeting, a specific team meeting, uh, a specific uh, uh, retreat that uh, someone is organizing so that you make sure that these people are included. I think this is the, the, the key thing, trying to to care for the newcomers so that they, they feel that they are part of an organization. Something that yeah. I started to do new is that now I send also a SMS to all newcomers in the organization. Also oh, wow. because, you know, 
some of what we are experiencing now, what we are talking about, people on the field experience it all the time, all the time. You know, they join an organization and don't see who are the faces uh, until they get into the next convention. So everything that we, we can learn from their experience can be useful for anyone now entering into an organization in kind of a hybrid mob. That, that is so true. And you're bringing su such an important point, right? I, I think we uh, we sometimes don't talk about, but the field, like people who are in facing customer facing jobs every single day are practically virtual. So ensuring that we, we do it and we can learn also for the, from uh, from them and how to lead those uh, organization is crucial. Uh, you talked about not making them feel isolated. I think isolation is one of the big topics uh, as we move forward. Uh, and I was looking at this word, you know, um, I talk a lot about sense of belonging in those days, right? Like, I think this might be one of the risks uh, that we're starting to see. And this is why we see more, uh, you know, people joining and then exiting, because there is this sense of belonging. I don't know if you felt it as you joined Spain, but there is something around, you know, going to the yes. place, seeing, you know, the officers, seeing the people that gets you, uh, you know, learning about the history through the chats, learning about the cultures through informal interaction, right? Not only Zoom scheduled calls gives you the sense of belonging and even feeling you're sure. part of something that is bigger. Uh, so I sure. love how you framed it, right? Like being intentional about recreating those moments for people who are joining, but also for our employees. I think this is one of the pieces we're seeing a lot in the US uh, and all over the world, I imagine, uh, but I'm sure for the numbers in the US, people leaving companies, right? Because I, I think there is this sense of belonging that somehow gets challenged for the last two years uh, and yes. then people reshuffle their, uh, you know, focuses and, and even sometimes priorities and values. I mean, that's fine. I mean, people uh, that have, you know, changed uh, their career have made a de decision uh, during the pandemic. It's fine. It's good for them if they are happy like this. More complicated is if you integrate someone and then down on the road six months uh, after, this person leave the company. Uh, is it because um, you could not integrate this person well, or is it because there is there was a misfit with the the culture? That's always the question, you know. And you have to learn from people leaving companies. Try to ask um, what what could when what could go wrong, uh, what could have gone wrong, what uh, could have gone uh, better. You know, you you really need to to learn from that. And you were mentioning the. Uh, sense of belonging, we try to reinforce it as well by um, kind of reinforce the communication around the newcomers. We have this kind of a, every two, two months, a call, a general call in the organization where we share the results and uh, some, of the, some of the flagship projects. And we, we, we have introduced a, a new rhythm now. And, uh, we always put a slide with the newcomers and we let them present themselves in front of the organization, you know, in a general management uh, call. And that's super interesting because that, that provides also, that opens the eyes uh, to the organization about the jobs that we have. And that's something that is that has been uh, very positive and will probably stay beyond the pandemic. I love it. Like that, that's, a, that's a great way to connect people uh, also together and, and welcome and include. And I love the idea of text messaging, the new ones. It's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, th this is, you know, it's again goes back to this uh, human interaction, right? And and making as a general manager, making sure you have it uh, with your team. This is super powerful what you're doing. That's that's really great. Uh, I always put myself in the shoes of uh, of my team, and I always wonder of myself entering into a company. What would I really appreciate? What would make my experience different? And you know, these kind of details. Uh, I think are, are interesting. I won't change the world with the SMS, but maybe I can inspire someone to put a bit more effort to, uh, in the integration to care a bit more for uh, their collaborators. So I think yeah. it's, you know, but, but this is still up, that uh, how we using this. Yeah. And this is how we change the rewards, right? Like one step, uh, step by step, like you definitely change their day and, you know, they had a positive day after receiving a message from you. Right. So it's, it's those small steps and those positive interactions that, that you can bring to people, right? That makes at the end, the bigger impact. 
you were successful uh, growing in the organization fast, right? You and leading larger and larger teams and in different cultures. You, you started in France, Portugal, Spain, and you love this. You said you love multicultural and being a global leader. Uh, and I think as you're growing, I'm sure you had you know different questions to yourself. We chatted a little bit about those. But, but if I want to look at at a different lens, anything you wish you knew before taking this last leadership job? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I would say the, you know the how do you say it uh, the what you, the weight on the shoulders. Uh, I I have been manager and uh, I know how it is to lead people and you you have kind of a sense of uh, uh, you. You owe them uh, something and you have the service to deliver to your team but now being a leader of a bigger organization and being responsible at the country level of an organization you know being the face i feel the weight of my shoulders on my shoulders and that obliged me to uh, you know put more efforts in the job to care more not only about the people but about also their projects what they are doing and that's something that um, can be quite exhaustive uh, sometimes uh, I would say, because it's a 100% uh, uh, 24 hours, uh, seven a days uh, a week uh, uh, posture that you have to give to your team, you know, availability and uh, uh, always, um, you know, being interested in what's happening in the organization. I would say this, this can be difficult. Um, and also, you know, what you, what you represent as a leader um that's something that is that can be hard especially for me because i'm a young leader and i feel that i represent much more than maybe uh the the value that i can uh that can, that i can deliver to the organization you see yeah uh you know i'd love to talk more about this you you mentioned that right young leader uh and I'm not going to go into the debate what young mean, right? But, but any, you know, any thoughts on this? I think there is a bunch of unconscious biases that might come with, uh, with young leadership or age. Uh, I know you're also a father, so you're 24-7, not only for your job, but for your family. I know you care a lot about your family. We all do. I do, right? And I went through this journey um, too. So, uh, you know, any, any thoughts uh, on this yes. part? And those who ask themselves, right? Like many times you would ask, can I do this important or this high uh, responsibility job while being a good father, a good, you know, husband, a good partner, uh, etc." Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So first things first, if you want to be a good father, uh, a, good, uh, um, a good partner, I think you have to be happy. So you have to do the things that uh, makes you happy. And uh, of course, you have to dedicate time to, uh, to everybody and to every uh, role of your life. But someone that uh, would feel frustrated will not, uh, would not be accomplished, would not be doing a good job even on the personal life either, you know? Um, it's true that it's, it is difficult for a young leader that is, a, I have young kids, uh, uh, three and five years old, to be at the point where you are, you know, building, a, uh, it's an intense moment of my career, but at the same time, it's also an intense moment uh, on my personal uh, life. Um, so it, it is difficult because your team, usually the, uh, you have a senior executive team, is not at the same uh, time of their life. And so you have, I think, to, to, to defend also the uh, work-life balance. And that's something that is positive down the road for the team. Because, you know, if we all has, always have the same leaders, leaders that have already uh, um, had their family, that all their, their kids are in college or whatever, they will not reflect their organization. So I feel that at least uh, I reflect part of uh, the organization and, you know, the theme of work-life balance. I can understand it better and try to act better uh, on this side. And that, and the other aspect, which is you know, lack of experience, clearly lack of experience on some of the uh, some of the topics that I have to to manage, that gives me even more um, you know reasons to learn from others, to uh, delegate, to be more kind of a, a con constructive observer. Um, than and take a humble position in my job than to be here and 
also maybe with more experience, but to sell my experience. So I feel that teach me uh, to, to be more humble and to listen to people and to try to understand how are things done and have just fresh eyes on, on, on the things, but always challenge using leveraging the seniority of your team. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Theoda, for this. These are, you know, amazing insights. I think for many of uh, the people listening, and I should point out all all that women leaders and unconscious biases linked to uh, linked to them, uh, right? In a certain point, how many times I'm sure you have also those discussions with amazing women leaders who would, uh, you know, who would be thinking of this or even blocking themselves or other leaders who might be having the wrong behaviors or, or the wrong um, the wrong messages right with uh, with all those unconscious biases i think uh, here the really the pandemic the pandemic helped us a lot huh, to uh to to enjoy the work environment uh celebrating the the unique uh about everybody uh unique situation of everybody and uh that taught us a lot the pandemic to be more uh, uh, conscious of uh the rhythm of our colleagues, uh, what's going on in their lives, and uh, how can we adjust also uh, to their their realities? Yeah, it, it brought back humanity in you know in leadership and in every person. <laughs> this is yeah, it's it's been terrible, but yeah, if there's one thing that for me that was the biggest thing as you're sharing. Sure. That, I'd love to move now and give one word and get your reaction to this word, if if okay for you. Yes, let's go. So the, the first one is uh, leadership. Um, as I said, so leadership for me is a, a position where you have to make yourself useful for people. So you have somehow to, to wonder, am I useful for my people or could I be just, uh, you know, deleted? If, if the response is yes, if you are here, nothing, the things would just uh, uh, continue as it is, then I don't think you are you should consider yourself as a leader. So being more the service of the people than uh, just you know passing by orders or priorities. What about the change? Necessary. <laughs> change is something that uh, that is constant that uh, we should always uh, remain uh, you know aware of. Uh, it's. Um, it's a mentality that everybody should have, you know, uh, being curious and happy to catch up uh, things differently, do things differently. So change is usually, I see it usually as a positive, uh, positive uh, thing. Yeah, this is this is not frequent, you know, like to seeing change positive is super important as a leader and looking at the opportunities. But also, you know, as you said many times, caring for your people and knowing where they are. But I definitely agree with you. Uh, what about MSM? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to ask this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, for everybody, uh, uh, everybody knows MSM clearly, right? So MSM would be the uh, the master at ESCP uh, Europe that uh, we both uh, we both went to, and I would say it was a it was a very rich experience, and for me it was the 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 game changer to allow me to enter into the industry and to uh, develop uh, as a leader as uh, as I am today. It's a great this, community. Yeah, and this constant learning, right? I think as a as a for for me that was one of the major pieces, as you said, right? Also seeing the importance of constantly unlearning, learning learning new yes. things. You started by being, you know, you said in basic science. And then suddenly you see all the bunch of opportunities around and the world is way bigger than, you know, I was a physician. It's exactly the same. Suddenly through this, uh, this program, this is what I've been uh, offered to see, right? The world through a different lens. Yes. And, and it continues, you know, because uh, as, as uh, we said, it's a community. So I keep, uh, you know, calling some of my uh, former uh, uh, colleagues from the, from the master and I ask them, uh, how do they do some of the things? Uh, how, what's their opinion on some of the aspect of the industry? So for me, it's really a, a, a source of uh, inspiration for many, uh, for many aspects, in many aspects. What about uh, spread love and organizations? Necessary. 
<laughs> no, clearly necessary. Um, if there were love is a strong word, huh? to be honest, uh, a bit a bit taboo somehow uh, in in organizations. But if you look at it in the the sense of you know being interested into people, being generous uh, about people, being uh, uh, curious about them and caring, then uh, on, the only word that can come to my mind is necessary. It's something that uh, that will fuel your organization to deliver. Uh, that would put a smile on your uh, collaborator's face so when they start working you know if there is a, if there is love then there is passion and if there is passion then there is a, a employee commitment you know i love it you know and i'm sure you can continue employee commitment better you know customer interactions and then better results for so many patients sure <laughs> sure any final word of wisdom Theodor, for uh, for the leaders around the world listening to you. Well, that's, that's a bit pretentious from, from my side, but I would say continue to listen to uh, the podcast "Spread Love" uh, uh, in organization because uh, it's uh, it's really <laughs> inspiring. Uh, thank you for bringing this uh, podcast to life, uh, Naji, because it, it's really inspiring and it sh it should be kind of the, in the curriculum of any executive in pharma. Uh, learning oh, wow. <laughs> to be uh, kind and uh, to also give back to uh, the community. Yeah, well, well, thanks. I, I can't thank you enough, uh, Theoda, for for this inspiring chat, for all your humility. You're such a humble leader, uh, but you've been amazingly uh, successful leading leading teams, again, across geographies. Uh, it's It's been such a pleasure to have you on, the podcast, on this podcast. Thanks a lot, Naji. Thank you all for listening to Spread Love and Organization podcast. Follow us on LinkedIn and social media. Subscribe on your preferred podcast platform and connect with us on spreadloveio.com. Most importantly, spread love in your organizations and spread the word around you to inspire others and amplify this movement our world so desperately needs.